So in this lecture, I will discuss closed convex subsets of a Hilbert space. Uh, so let's start with a, a theorem. So X is a Hilbert space. Then we have K, a closed convex subset. And we can define, if you take a point X in X, we can define the distance from X to K as the infimum over all y in x of y minus x, the norm of y minus x, so y in x. And my claim is that there exists a unique z in k such that the distance from z to x it's equal to uh, the distance from x to k. So there is a z in k which minimizes this infimum. So actually, this infimum, it's a minimum, and it's unique. If you have z1 and z2 um, which attain that infimum, they are equal. So here's the proof. Well. So you fix a closed convex subset, K. You take X in X. You define this infimum. This is an infimum. Uh, so let me find the sequence Yn, which almost attain that infimum. So Yn, I'm sorry here I made a mistake. It's not X. It's K, of course. We are minimizing over K. So, right, I'm defining the distance between x and k as the infimum over all points in k of the norm of y minus k. So let me take a sequence yn, yn in k, and such that this distance, yn minus x, converge to the infimum, and let me call this infimum simply by d. And now, um, what I want to claim is that this sequence, Yn, is a Cauchy sequence. And the idea is as follows. So you have here your convex set K, here point X. So here's, let's say, the minimal distance. And you're taking a sequence Yn which is approaching to this distance. So, well, it's reasonable to think that uh, this sequence Yn is a Cauchy sequence. And in order to prove that it's Cauchy, I will use the uh, parallelogram identity. So remember the parallelogram identity writes that uh, if you take two times the norm of x squared plus two times the norm of y squared, this is equal to x minus y square plus x plus y square. And well, here I will use x and y as x minus yn and x plus yn. So uh, let's write this identity taking x to be x minus yn and x plus yn. So what I have is that x minus yn square two times plus two times x minus ym square, that this is equal to, well, the difference and the sum. So if I take the difference of these two points, I get x minus x, they cancel, and I get minus yn plus ym. So here I have ym minus yn squared plus 
Then I take the sum, and the sum gives me 2x minus yn minus ym square. So this I will write as minus x, 2 times x minus yn plus ym. Let me divide this identity by 4. So when I divide it by 4, here I get 1 half. 1 half. 1 fourth. And 1 fourth, but I'll put it inside. So when I get 1 fourth due to the square, it becomes 1 half. So this 2 goes away. And I get here 2. So what I really have here, it's x minus yn plus yn plus ym over 2. Now, um, let's see. K, it's a convex subset. yn and ym belong to K. So yn plus ym divided by 2, it's also an element of K. Since um, this is an element of K, this difference, well, this norm squared, it's bounded below, uh, above, by d squared, because d is the infimum. So d is smaller than this quantity, because k is convex, and therefore yn plus ym is um, bounded. So if I look at this identity now, I will use the fact that this quantity is converging to d. And this means that if I fix epsilon positive, I can find n0 such that for n and m larger than n0, yn minus yx, well, we know that d is always smaller than this quantity because d is the infimum. But since this quantity is converging to d, we can find n0 for which this quantity, if n is sufficiently large, it's bounded by d plus epsilon. Right? So if now I take in this identity n and m larger than n0, I get from um, this identity that let me write it as one fold of yn minus ym norm square, which is equal to 1 half x minus yn square plus 1 half x minus ym square minus x minus yn plus ym divided by 2 norm square. Now, for that fixed epsilon, by choosing n and m larger than n0, this first quantity is bounded by d plus epsilon. This one, it's also bounded by d plus epsilon. Since I have 1 half, I get that this is bounded by d plus epsilon. While um, this other quantity here, it's always larger than d, because yn plus yn over 2 belongs to k. So this is d, it's the infimum. So this is, as I said, bounded above uh, m here. Sorry, I have square, because this is squared. So here's d squared. So here, as I said, this is bounded below with the minus sign. It's bounded above. So I get the minus d squared, and this is equal to epsilon. And this means that, well, if n and m are larger than n0, then one fourth of the square of this norm is bounded by epsilon, which means that yn is a Cauchy sequence as I claimed. So I obtained a sequence yn in k, whose norm is converging to uh, d. 
the number of yn minus x is converging to d, and I proved that this sequence is Cauchy. Well, since x is a Hilbert space, it's complete, which means that this sequence yn is converging to z, and therefore uh, d, which is equal to the limit of yn minus x, as yn is converging to z, this is equal to z minus x. And this proves that, indeed, I can find an element z such that z minus x is equal to the distance. And it's clear that z belongs to k because we assumed that k is a closed set and all yn belong to k. So this proof, uh, the first assertion of this theorem, that there exists a z in k which uh, attains uh, exactly the distance. So the norm of z minus x, it's exactly the distance from x to k. Now, um, let me prove the uniqueness. So it remains to prove uniqueness. And to prove uniqueness, what we need to show is that, well, assume that we have z1 and z2 in k, such that, well, z1 and z2 attain the infimum, which means that the norm of z1 minus x, it's equal to the norm of z2 minus x, which is equal to the infimum, which we call d. So again, I will use the parallelogram identity with z1 minus x and z2 minus x. So by that identity, we have that two times the norm of z1 minus x square plus two times the norm of z2 minus x square, it's equal to the norm square of the sum. So if you sum, you get z1 plus z2 minus 2x, or which is the same thing, 2x minus z1 plus z2, plus the square of the norm of the difference. But the difference, you see it's z1 minus z2 because the x will cancel. So it's z1 minus z2. And again, as we did before, let's divide that by uh, a quarter. So divide that by 4. So we get here 1 half and 1 half, 1 fourth and 1 fourth. And this 1 fourth, let me uh, put it inside. So it becomes a 2 because of the square. So when we divide that by 2, we get x. And dividing that by 2, we get z1 plus z2. And here again, this is equal to 1 half of d squared, because, well, z1, by assumption z1 minus x, it's equal to d. So I have here 1 half of d squared plus 1 half of d squared for the same reasons, which is equal, well, k is convex, so z1 plus z2 divided by 2 belongs to k. So this quantity here, it's larger than the infimum. And therefore, this quantity, it's larger than d squared. Right? So we have, on the left-hand side, d squared. On the right-hand side, we have a quantity, a positive quantity, plus d squared, plus something which is larger than d squared. Right? So for this quantity to hold, well, we need this quantity here to be equal to d squared, and this quantity to be 0. So that tells you that the norm of z1 minus z2, it's equal to 0, which means that z1, it's equal to z2, and that proves uniqueness, which means that if I have two points in k which attain the infimum, they have to be equal. And this completes the proof of this theorem. Now, uh, let me introduce a definition. I will say, let's assume that we have y a subset of x, which is a linear subset. Then I will define by y orthogonal, y perp, the orthogonal of y. So this is the set of all points x in x, which are orthogonal to y, such that x, y, it's equal to 0 for all y in y. So these are all elements of x 
which are orthogonal to all elements of y. And what I want to prove is the following proposition. So x is a Hilbert space, y it's a linear subspace, and my claim, my first claim is that, well, let's assume that it's closed. If it's closed, then the perpendicular y perp is also closed. Then two, we can express all elements of x in a unique way as a sum of an element of y and an element of y perp. So x is equal to y plus y perp. And the meaning of this sentence is that for all x in x, there exist y in y and y perp in y perp such that x is equal to y plus y perp, and that the intersection, so that um, this decomposition is unique in the sense that the intersection of y and y perp is equal to uh, the zero element. And finally, I want to prove that if you take um, y perp, so we started from a closed linear subset. Well, y perp, it's a closed linear subset also. So I can take the perpendicular, the orthogonal of the orthogonal. And what I get is that this is equal to y. So I want to prove uh, these three statements. So let's prove the first claim of this proposition. So remember, x is a Hilbert space, y it's a closed linear subspace of x, and I'm claiming that y perp, which is defined over there, it's a closed linear subspace. Well, that it's linear, uh, it's essentially obvious. You take two points, x1 and x2 in y perp. I want to show that x1, say, plus x2 belongs to y perp. So to prove that, I need to show that you fix y in y. I need to prove that x1 plus x2 is orthogonal to y. But this is equal to bilinearity x1 y plus x2 y. Since x1 and x2 belongs to y perp, this is 0 and that's 0, which means that the sum is equal to 0 which prove that x1 plus x2 indeed belong to y perp. And you can repeat the proof to show that y, if you take any scalar, alpha, alpha x1 belongs to y perp. So it's clear that this space, it's a linear space. And the fact that it's closed is also very simple. Consider sequence xn in y perp, assume that xn converge to x, and we want to show that x belongs to y perp. So for that, fix again a y in y. You write x, y, the scalar product between x and y. You want to show that this is equal to 0. But xn converge to x. You know that the scalar product is continuous with respect to the convergence, so this is the limit in n of x n y. But since x n belong to y perp, this scalar product is equal to 0. So this, con this sequence is constant equal to 0, which means that its limit is also equal to 0. And therefore, x belongs to y perp. And this proves that, indeed, y perp is a closed linear subspace. So the next statement is that x can be uh, written as the sum of y and uh, y perp. So here's uh, the idea. We have y, and uh, we have some point x. You want to express x as an element of y and an element which is perpendicular to y. 
So we will use the previous theorem in order to find well, why it's a closed. It's linear, therefore it's a convex, a closed convex subset. So you can find a point here, uh, let me call it y maybe zero, which belongs to y and which minimizes the distance from x to uh, the space y. And what I claim is that x minus y zero belongs to y per. Right, so the idea is to write x, so find that y zero, and then write x as y zero plus x minus y zero. And what uh, y zero, it's an element of y. x minus y zero, if we show that it's an element of y perp, we have um, the decomposition of x as an element of y and an element of y perp. So the main point here is to show that if y is the one which minimizes, then x minus y zero, it's perpendicular to any element uh, of y in y. So to prove that, well, let me consider the following object. So let me define y zero as the one which minimizes, and we know that there exists only one uh, by the previous theorem. So here's this point y zero, and let me add to this point t times y, where y it's any element in y. So this, as a function of t, it's a function which has a minimum at t equal to zero. Because, well, y0 minus ty, it's an element of y, because y, it's uh, linear. But here I'm taking t in r. So this is an element, y0 minus ty, it's an element of y. This is minimized when t is equal to 0. Therefore, as a function of t, t, an element in r, this function has a minimum on a t equal to r. And that we know that this is equal to x minus y0 square plus two times t, uh, the real part of x minus y0 y plus t square y square. So um, if you, so this is a polynomial of second order in t. As a function of t, it has a minimum at t equal to zero, which means that the derivative of this function in t at t equal to zero, it's equal to zero, and that gives you that the real part of x minus y zero y, that this is equal to zero. Now, if you repeat the same, if you're working in the fields of complex numbers, you can repeat uh, the same argument with it instead of i. So what you get here is that you have i here, so i bar, and that will give you that minus, so if I repeat the same thing, I have here y, but this will give me one. So nothing changes here, and here I get just that the real part of convex, complex conjugate of i, which is minus i, times this scalar product, it's equal to zero. And now repeating the argument and saying that as a function of t, this expression has a minimum at t equal to zero, I get that the real part of this expression is equal to zero, and from that I conclude that the imaginary part of x minus y zero, y, it's equal to zero, and from these two expression, I get that indeed the scalar product of x minus y zero, y, it's equal to zero. And I prove that for any y, so I get that indeed x minus y0 belongs to y perp, 
and that um, this is therefore a decomposition of x as an element of y and a, an element of y perp. So the only thing which remains to be proven is that while well, the intersection of these two sets it's equal to zero. So I want now to show that y intersection y perp it's equal to uh, the element zero. So let's take an element y in uh, this set. Well, it belongs to y, and it also belongs to y perp. This means that y y prime it's equal to zero for any y prime in y because it belongs to y perp. But now take, since y belongs to y, I can take y prime equal to y. And from that, I conclude that y, the norm of y squared is equal to 0. And therefore, that y is equal to 0. Therefore, this proves uh, this claim. So now the last claim of this proposition is that if we take the orthogonal of y and we take the orthogonal of this set, this is equal to y. So as usual, we will first well, we prove that each set is contained in the other set. So I'll start showing that this set is contained in Y. So let me take a Z, which belongs to Y, the orthogonal of Y, orthogonal. So this means, and I want to show that Z belongs to Y. So this means that Z, W, it's equal to 0 for all w in y perp. Okay. Now, uh, we know that the space, by using the second claim which I proved, I always can write z as an element of y and an element of y perp. So u, u belongs to y, and v belongs to y perp. This is always possible. So now let's use the fact, this identity, for elements of y perp. So let v is an element of y perp. So let's take the scalar product on both sides with respect to v. So I get that by linearity, the scalar product of z with v, it's equal to the scalar product of u with v, plus the scalar product of v with v, but this is v square, the norm of v square. Now, v, it's an element of y perp, and therefore, the scalar product of z with v is equal to 0. So this is 0. And u, it's an element of y, v, it's an element of y perp, and therefore, the scalar product of these two is also equal to 0. And from this identity, we conclude that v is equal to 0. Therefore, z is actually an element of y, because z is equal to u. So that proves that if any element of the orthogonal of the orthogonal of y, it's actually an element of y. So it remains to prove that y is contained in the orthogonal of the orthogonal of y. So let me take z an element of y, and I want to show that z is an element of this space. Well, to show that z is an element of y perp perp, I have to show that the scalar product of z and w is equal to 0 for all w in y perp. Right? So this is the definition of the orthogonal of this set. So it means that these are all points z, which are orthogonal, whose scalar product with any element of y perp is equal to 0. So let's take an element of y perp, and let's consider the scalar product of z and w. Well, <coughs> this scalar product is equal to 0, because y belongs to w belongs to the orthogonal of y, and z belongs to y. So by definition of y orthogonal, this is equal to 0. 
Therefore, we prove that whatever w in y perp we take, this scalar product of z with w is zero, which means that z belongs to the orthogonal of this set, which is uh, y orthogonal orthogonal. So this proves that y is indeed a subset of the orthogonal of the orthogonal. And that completes the proof of this proposition. So let me complete uh, this short lecture with a remark. We proved that in the context of Hilbert spaces, that if y is a closed linear space, then the orthogonal of y is a closed linear space. Well, this is not true for Banach spaces. In Banach spaces, we have seen that if we have a finite dimensional linear subspace, then indeed y orthogonal is um, a closed. But this is not true in general. So this is a, well, a property which holds in Hilbert space, but which does not hold in general on Banach spaces. 